Well, everybody, it is that time of the year again, and maybe you'll have an opportunity to spend some really nice quality time with friends, family. If you're really lucky like me, maybe you'll get an opportunity to watch too many Hallmark movies. What do you say we take a look at my top five-ish bourbons of 2021? Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for all the support here in 2021. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. So this is always a list every year that I look forward to kind of putting together. This year was a little bit different. I don't think there were nearly the uh, amount of quality bourbons that, were, that would, I guess, basically allow for you to put a super large list together, but I've narrowed it down to five-ish uh, bourbons that I felt are worthy of being in my top five bourbons of 2021. Let's first start out with a couple of honorable mentions. I toss these around whether or not these you know should or shouldn't go in the top uh, five. Ultimately decided on putting these uh, as my honorable mention. Let's first start with from Maker's Mark. This is the Maker's Wood Series Finishing FAE 01. Absolutely fantastic bourbon. This is one of those LEs, limited editions, that are still fairly readily available, meaning you have the opportunity to still go out and find these bourbons uh, either at the distillery, you know, locally. They're not, for whatever reason, people aren't always flocking after these. I still rack my mind why that's the case. I don't understand exactly why people aren't clamoring to get these. But anyway, FAE 01, absolutely fantastic bourbon. This was the spring of 2021 release where they finished these in 10 virgin oak um, uh, toasted staves. And again, like I said before, absolutely incredible bourbon, honeys, vanillas, very, very sweet bourbon, uh, very kind of decadent, but one that I felt was worthy and had to be somewhere in this list for uh, 2021. Okay, moving on. This was one I think that some people, this may surprise you a little bit, or maybe some people have no idea about this. This right here from Lucky Seven Spirits is their 14 year old, 133.1 proof Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. For me, it was an absolutely incredible bourbon period rich bold complex everything i look for in a quality well done bourbon this has everything not to say or to slide um can our um lucky seven any but if this was a bourbon that was in a fancier label named uh, bottle people would go absolutely crazy over this it's a great bourbon. Uh, if it's something that you can find, I know some places have done some store picks of these, but if you can find just any of these single barrels uh, aged 14 years and up on the shelf, I think it's worth the $125 price point for exactly what this is. So again, this is one of my honorable mentions for my bourbon of the year 2021. Okay. Now we're moving into the top five, and we're gonna start out with number five. Again, these are all, again, you can put these in whatever order. This is my list. Uh, this could change you know, daily, um, but this is something I wanted to kind of get in there, put this list together, and go from there. This one may surprise some of you. I was absolutely amazed when I first tried this, but my number five bourbon of 2021 goes to the guys over this was absolutely fantastic blend. This is a blend that they incorporated three different states, the state of New York, Kentucky, and Tennessee. I was absolutely blown away. I love the blend that, um, that Ryan and Kenny did, and I'm really super excited for watching and seeing what it is that these guys do 
in the future. I just felt that with the complexity, the richness, all at right around that $55, $60 price point, it was just a really well done bourbon and one that was memorable to me. So that has a lot to do with it. If you kind of continue to think about a certain you know bottle throughout the year, one that's a little bit memorable, this just always kept resonating, was always in the back of my mind and felt that based on what it is, what they did, it just had to be in my top five. So there you have it, number five, um, the Pursuit United from the guys at Bourbon Pursuit. Uh, definitely give this one a look if you can still find it. All right, moving on to my number four bourbon of 2021. Again, from good old Maker's Mark, this happens to be their FAE 02. This for me now is where the list starts to, I guess, get a little bit more kind of complex, uh, maybe a little bit more difficult kind of putting this together. But I loved, loved the Maker's FAE 02. Uh, this was basically finished with 10 virgin uh, French oak staves uh, versus the toasted staves of the FAE 01. The richness, the complexity, I had the opportunity to try this, was a little bit unfair, but in the Rick House at Makers, in that limestone cellar where all the Makers 46 is, is stored, so it gave a little bit of a kind of a, a unfair comparison, but this was my second bottle. I've already gone through one, uh, just started kind of getting into my second bottle of the FAE 02. Absolutely incredible bourbon at a right around $65. Again, going back to like the FAE 01, these are bourbons that generally speaking, you can find. They, they kind of hang out on the shelves. They're at the distillery, so they are readily available, similar to the, um, the Pursuit United. So I wanted to incorporate some of these bourbons that weren't just completely all allocated and anybody was never, you know, never had the opportunity to get. This is one of those, what I call still a limited edition bourbons that sits on the shelves for, I, I don't even understand why. But again, this is the FAE 02. Uh, this one specifically came in um, at, I uh, forget what the proof was on this one, 109.1, but absolutely incredible uh, bourbon right around that $65 price point. And again, this comes in as my number four uh, bourbon of 2021. All right, moving on. Here is where it gets to be, uh, again, um, a little bit on the uh, difficult side in terms of the bourbons to get. Uh, fortunately, my man Young Pei Chang helped me get this bottle. I originally tried it at a bar uh, while I was visiting in Kentucky over the summer. Was absolutely blown away. I knew at that point I had to get my uh, hands on a bottle. Fortunately, I was able to get uh, my hands on this. Tried it. Absolutely loved it. The Russell's 13. Uh, this comes in, again, Great proof point, 114.8 proof, non-chill filtered. Uh, and this is supposed to have uh, bourbons upwards of possibly 16 years. So it's age stated, as you can see, as 13 years, uh, minimum age of the bourbon in that uh, bottle. So again, rich, bold fruits, chocolates, you know, tobacco, nice, rich caramels, vanillas. It is you know, without saying the perfect bourbon, it's very close to what so many of us look for, you know, in a great bourbon. Russell's has just, you know, they're always tried and true. I mean, it's a fantastic bourbon, great lineup. Uh, absolutely love what it is uh, that goes into all of these Russell's bottles. This is, for me, maybe my favorite Russell's that they've produced uh, to date. So... There you have it, my number three bourbon of 2021. Okay, my number two bourbon of 2021 just so happens to be from one of my favorite whiskey companies out there. These guys, Bill, Bobby, they do an incredible job with sourcing these, these great bourbons finishing these you know great bourbons you know they're the hustle that these guys put in to allocate some of these casks you know whether it's the bourbons the finishing casks whatever it may be 
they are doing it right. Uh, this is an incredible uh, bourbon. This just happens to be the Forgate Kelvin Collaboration 3. Uh, this was finished in the PX Sherry and rum casks. So you start out with great base, you know, bourbons, uh, aged bourbons that they finish for um, a period of time in, again, the PX Sherry and rum casks. But for me, was just a very memorable bourbon and one that I knew was going to make it, you know, in my top whatever list of 2021. This just so happens to be, you know, finishing number two. Uh, you'll see kind of where and how uh, my number one falls in there. But again, this comes in at about 123.7 proof. MSRP on this one, right around that $200 price point. Very typical of, of Forgate and what it is that, that they uh, put out there. But again, this is their Forgate, the Kelvin Collaboration 3. Incredible uh, finished bourbon. Okay, we are down to my number one bourbon of 2021 for so many reasons. And it happens to be the Remus Repeal 5. For me, when I first tried this, um, I, I've been a little unlucky up to this time in getting a lot or any of the uh, Remus uh, releases. I was able to get three a couple years ago, uh, went through that very, very quickly. When I came across this uh, at a local liquor store, Knew I had to get it, wanted to try if it had, if it was anything like three was, I was gonna be very happy. Well, when I kind of dove into this, let some air hit this and tried what this Remus 5 had to offer. Now this is whiskeys that are anywhere from 13 to 16 years, proof down to 100 proof. I think personally that this was very, very well crafted. I think them proofing some of those ages down to 100 really, truly allowed this bourbon to shine. It's a great drinking, great sipping bourbon. One I absolutely love. This is the second bottle. I plowed through one already, uh, but again, this is a bourbon that comes in at uh, right around $70, $80 uh, MSRP. It was or seemed to be a little more readily available uh, this year in 21 than prior batches. I don't know if they've made more of it or the allocation has become a little bit larger, but I did see that it seemed like a lot more people were able to get their hands on the Remus 5 this year than prior batches. So I felt really good about this being my number one for lots of reasons. The overall complexity, the sweetness, the caramels, the vanillas, the chocolate, the oak, the balance. Um, I mean, everything, it became very close to that perfect kind of sipping bourbon that a lot of us truly look for. So there you have it. This is my top five with a couple of honorable mentions, whiskeys or bourbon specifically of 2021. I'd love to know or hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are there things that you tried, things that you didn't get a chance to try? Would absolutely love to hear your feedback on this top five bourbon of 2021. I would have to say a big thank you to all of you guys for all of the support uh, throughout the, the year of 2021. Again, I know it's been a little bit of a challenging year, uh, but again, very incredible. I've had the chance to kind of do an awful lot uh, more with the channel, uh, with a couple of other things, but I appreciate you guys really sticking with me. Look forward to what 2022 uh, has to offer. Really interested to see what will kind of develop whiskey-wise in 2022. Uh, it's a very crazy whiskey world, as we all know out there, but uh, was very uh, pleased with uh, being able to put this list together for you guys this year. So leave a comment below. Uh, if you'd like to help follow, or excuse me, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can through my Patreon page, which I'll have linked in the description below. If you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Again, thank you so much for everything in 2021. And remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers.